Hello everybody, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. I'm Teresa with Keep in Touch Crafts and I'm coming to you from Oak Grove, Minnesota. And uh, we're going to be doing the last of our series of note card sets. And we're doing this to be able to make gifts for people or have a stash for ourselves on hand. I've done several, um, several in the past, a couple of other broadcasts with that. And now this last one here um, is not going to have any pattern paper. It's going to be kind of a lot different because the other ones used the designer series paper or DSP a lot more. And this one is just going to be stamping. So we'll be stamping, coloring, folding, all that good stuff. So you're going to be able to just grab a stamp set that has sentiments that you like and grab um, maybe some uh, cardstock that is white or kind of a basic color and then a uh, cardstock color that you want to have included with your stamp set, something that'll go with all of your cards. We're going to have um, a matte color of cardstock. So white, a color, um, inks, you could probably just use black if you want, but if you want a color that'll coordinate with what you're going to be stamping, we can do that too. Uh, you may want blends if you have them or another way to color in your images. But um, lots of ways that you can do this. I'm going to give you one example and then um, we'll go through it together. We'll make the holder that uh, we will use with it. And then after that, I will show you several other sets that I have made that um, may give you some other ideas with other stamp sets and that kind of thing. So we're going to have a lot of fun with our last note card series tonight. So welcome again. Um, if you are um, looking for a good deal, I would suggest go to the Stampin' Ups! website. Here's um, this where you can go to that. Oh, it came up right away. Um, and we have a refresh of a bunch of clearance items, and they're really good prices. So if you're wanting to uh, beef up your supplies, take a look over there at the Stampin' Ups! website, or the store that I have there, and you'll see um, some really good deals. They are while supplies last, of course, so I think some things are already uh, have already sold out. So get on over there if you're looking for a good deal, okay? All right, so let's get going. Um, I'm gonna put the camera down here and we can get a move on for our um, project tonight. So the first thing I'm gonna grab um, is some supplies and my cheat sheet there. Um, let's see, that you don't need to see. So there's a lot to this as far as parts, but it's not hard. We're going to be making five cards, so you will also be wanting to grab five note um, envelopes. Thank you. Five envelopes that will go along with your um, basic A2 size cards that we're going to be making. Um, one of these, actually I'll just use one. One of them we're going to stamp on, and this is where we're going to stamp our images in a certain way. And then we're going to take our cardstock color, and I'll show you what I'm using. Uh, I'm going to use the soft succulent color today. I'm going to kind of have a floral stamp set that I'm using. We do have one that's coming out that you'll be able to order soon. Um, it's hard to see. i got to zoom out just a little bit here. There you go. I think it's all on there now. Um, so this is called uh, the Framed Florets is the stamp set. It also comes with, it's a suite of products. You can get, you'll be able to choose, um, I think you can get these separate, separate, but it is a suite that's going to be introduced. And I believe it's November 1st that you'll be able to order this. So um, it is our Framed Florets dies look like this. And this is what I just love about it is these really pretty uh, frames that come with it. Of course, you know that you can use those in anything. And these two larger ones, or the two ovals here, the center can be used also, so it cuts that out at the same time. And I don't know if you can see, there is some detail on there too, just like some really, like a frame around it that's in, in the actual die. And then this just cuts out the hearts, and you can even save the hearts and make like a shaker card or confetti with that. And then these are the stamped images that there are dies for in here, as well as some of this, these uh, greenery sprays, that kind of thing. Um, I'm probably just going to be stamping using the Framed Florette stamp set, and then I'll use the sentiments that come with it too. Um, you can always mix and match if you want. Now this other one, Framed and Festive, that comes with it, 
um, works well with those ovals also that come with that uh, die set. But these are our Christmas theme for those, so I'll probably use those later. Um, I'm going to do the framed florets tonight. So we're going to get stamping. Pull in your trimmer or whatever scoreboard that you prefer to use. And we're going to score on our paper and then we're going to stamp. And the scoring is just going to kind of give us an idea of where we're going to be cutting this when we're done. So we're going to have strategic stamping and then we're going to cut it out and we'll have five card fronts from one piece of cardstock. So go ahead and um, like I said, we're going to get our, um, we're going to be doing some scoring first and what we're going to do I got to grab my sheet here whoops okay so what you need to do first is we're going to um, cut our paper down to eight and a quarter by eleven so normally whoops I just turned on my sound Shush. oh goodness that lady on the computer over there that was myself <laughs> I bumped it and it turned on the sound um, okay, so we're going to be cutting just a quarter of an inch off of the long edge here. So it's going to be eight and one fourth by 11 after we trim this quarter inch off. All right, let's do that. I'm just making sure it's straight. And eight and a fourth by 11. And now we're just going to score. We're not going to cut it apart yet. So don't use this darker blade at the top. We're going to use this scoring blade instead and first thing I want you to do is we're going to score down the center and the scoring is going to be at uh, let me see make sure I'm telling you the right thing oh and by the way I want to give a shout out to Leanne Greff because she is a demonstrator that um, I kind of got some of these some of these ideas from her I'm I'm changing them a little bit to for our um, project tonight but she's very talented and I want to thank her for her wonderful ideas so thank you Leanne um, I'm gonna put this down where you can see it better let's go ahead and score at why can't I see this here Do -do -do -do. okay our mm -mm. all right so we're gonna go at four and three fourths so you're gonna Go ahead, put your blade or your edge of your paper at four and three fourths and score a nice line on that. And then you will, that's the only vertical or the only line in that direction. So then you're going to want to turn it this way and then you're going to make a, three scores. The first one is going to be at three and a half. Okay, so score at three and a half. I am using basic white thick cardstock. It doesn't have to be that, but oh, that doesn't look right to me. Mm, see it? Guys, I might have already messed up. Wow. Uh, three and a half, four and three quarter, fourths. Is that, oh, that's right. I'm panicked. Oh, this doesn't look right though to me. Oh, I wasn't supposed to go all the way. Oh, brother. One of those days. Okay, let's start again. Cut off a fourth of an inch. I've done about, I don't know how many of these I've done. And of course, I must get stage fright because uh, now I just messed it up and I've done a million of them already. And so I should practically could do this in my sleep. Okay, try it again. We are going to um, score down at four and three fourths down the middle. Not cut. All right, then we are going to be scoring these as two separate sections, okay? So this section here at the top is going to be scored at four and three fourths and nine and a half, but I'm only gonna go to this line that's scored there. So that we start with um, four and three fourths, just like I did, but don't go all the way. Just go to that line, the narrow panel, and you're going to the center. And we have a nice little mark on our um, trimmer here. Whoops. This scoring blade has a little bit of a line right there so I can see exactly where it's going. So we're going right up to this line at four and three fourths. Okay. Then scoot it down at nine and a half. I better zoom out again here. 
All right, so hopefully you can see that okay. And the next spot here I said was nine and a half. So we're gonna go on out to nine and a half and do the same scoring just up to that line. Okay, so I don't know if you can, how well you can see it, but there's a line here and a line here. Now we're gonna score this portion and we're gonna turn it here so that we can do that. We are going to, um, let's see here. I'm gonna bring it down to this edge. So let me move my trimmer so you can see it better. Um, so what I wanna do first is score it at three and a half up to the center line, or it's not in the center actually, um, three and a half. All right, so let's get that scoring blade back and we're gonna go to the center. Okay, so three and a half, and then you're gonna do another, they're, each of them are gonna be three and a half, so the next one is gonna be at seven. Um, I'm gonna have to go up here. All right, so here's a score at seven just to that line, that first score, and then um, ten and a half, ten and one half. So just a little bit of a, a little bit left on that end there, a half inch. And so go to that first score line. All right, so that's that one. Then I want you to get another piece of white, basic white, and um, I, uh, Actually, you're going to need more than that. Now, the basic white that is just our regular weight is what I would use for the card bases. You could use a color if you'd rather, but this makes five of them. So um, that would mean you'd need three eight and a half by 11 inch pieces of cardstock, and you can score and cut them to get your five bases. But then you're going to also, instead of, you actually get six then, right? So one of them we are going to be stamping on to use on the front of our holder, okay? And since we're going to be stamping, we're going to do it all at once. So this is, um, let me see here. So we are going to go ahead and cut this down. I'm trying to not lose everything. Uh, there's a lot of little pieces on this one. And let's see where I put them all here. Okay, so to make, for this to go on the front of our portfolio, I had that pattern piece. Oh, here it is. And you're gonna cut this down to eight by five and one fourth. And it is going to be um, scored in the center. So let's see, let's go. I have a score in the center already. So if I want it eight wide, I want each of these sides to be at four. So just go ahead and trim off a fourth of an inch off of each of these edges of one of, of the extra card base, the one that we aren't using. Gosh, this is not working the best. So I cut a quarter of an inch off of one side, and now I'm cutting a quarter of an inch off of the other side. All right, so that gives us a total length of eight. And then we're going to cut the width down as well. We don't need it to be, what we want is two panels that are four by five and a quarter. So we only need a five and a quarter inch piece of this and it's already um, more than that. So we only need five and a quarter. Come on paper. Okay, you probably can't even see what I'm doing. So I'm going to five and one fourth and I am gonna trim off then, that's trimming about a quarter of an inch off of one of the edges here. I hope that's right. Four by five and a quarter. Yes, okay. Let's see if this one's right. Four, yeah, so it must be right. Four by five and a quarter, perfect. So that one is ready to be stamped on as well as the other one that we scored. Um, we will be doing a little more trimming um, and cutting in a bit, but we are going to do our stamping next. I also want you to cut down some inside pieces for the inside of the cards. And for that, you are going to need five panels that are three and a half by 
four and three fourths. And I'll just show you how to do that with one piece of cardstock. Um, I just find this to be a little, you get an extra one out of your paper, your cardstock, if you cut it this way. First, take your paper, and uh, this is just the basic white, regular weight again. Um, and this is going to be for the inside of our cards that we're making. So I need five. We're doing five note cards. So first, go ahead and cut at three and a half with the short side up. And then cut each of those into five, uh, four and three fourths. So there's four and three fourths, and there is four and three fourths. All right, so there's two of the five that we need. So then pull in this other piece, and it's about five inches, I believe. So we only wanted four and three fourths. So let's cut um, a little bit off, a quarter of an inch off of one side. So there is a width of four and three fourths, and now we're gonna cut three more of those three and a half uh, width pieces. So three and a half there, three and a half here. And this just allows you to get five inside layers. Um, let's see, three and a half. Instead of just four as we normally cut it by, at four by five and a quarter, then or four and a quarter, five and a half, either way, you only get four, but this way we're gonna get five middles out of it, centers. And we'll be able to stamp those too when we're doing all of our stamping. Okay. Okay, pull in your whatever you're gonna need to be stamping and choose your colors and do all that fun. Um, I am going to be stamping on, these are our bases, we don't need to stamp on those. We do need our inside, um, or actually our piece that was um, cut in half. Yeah, the one that I cut down, remember when we just cut this one down to um, eight by five and one fourth. This is, we're gonna stamp on that, we're gonna stamp on this, and we're going to stamp on the insides, those five inside pieces, okay? Now I'm grabbing my stamp set, and I am going to grab all of my stamping supplies. So I have a cleaner with my chamois here. I have my uh, tray of stamping blocks. And I am going to be using this framed florets. Uh, if you want to grab your ribbon, we don't need it yet, but just as uh, you're going to want some ribbon to go around our portfolio that holds our cards in there, then choose your ink colors. I would say three is fine. You can do four. Um, just think of kind of the palette of what you want your cards to look like. Um, I'm not going to use a lot of the Evening Evergreen, but just as kind of an accent. Most things will be in these three colors. I've chosen the Orchid Oasis polished pink, soft succulent, and that's the one that matches the cardstock layer that I'm going to be cutting, and then the evening evergreen, okay? So uh, we're going to want to do some stamping then on our actual pieces. And what we're going to do is kind of follow a pattern, and then if we follow a pattern on where we're stamping on this, then we'll be able to make all five at once. And that kind of is hard to explain, but let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, first, I usually start with my largest image that I want to be stamping with. So probably one of these I would use as my largest. Um, let's just use this. It really doesn't matter. This is photopolymer. And so they're clear. You can see right where you're going with it. And just grab... Um, any of your blocks that would hold it so it sticks right on your block and you don't have to it doesn't fall off it's you can see right through it see right where you're going when you're stamping which is so nice and um which color ink do I want to use this for now solid ones can be better because then you don't have to do any um coloring which I did not plan that right I should have used something that was more solid and then you don't have to color it. Uh, what am I doing? Oh well. Let's go ahead and maybe just stamp our images in the black then. Sorry guys. I guess we're using blends instead. <laughs> if you have 
Normally this stamping can be done with, um, with solid images and then you don't have to color anything. I wasn't thinking. I'm just wondering if I have something else around, but we'll just do some quick coloring. So here is um, one image. And what I'm going to be doing is kind of following a template. And here I'm going to show this to you. I don't know if you can get it all in at once. It's really messy looking, I know, but I want you to kind of see this template. So what we're doing is, th this is the cutting guide. And here it shows the four and three fourths, and then the three and a half, four and three fourths. And this is what we already scored. These pieces, the fourth of an inch that we already cut off, and this little band here all get uh, discarded. We don't need that. Now where you see these green circles, this is where we're gonna be stamping. And we're gonna be stamping on here so that each of these panels has an image on two of the sides. So this, this is gonna be a, a panel, and that's gonna have two sides covered there. This one is gonna have two. This one over here, these two here that are the other direction, they will each have two sides stamped as well. So you're gonna be doing the stamping and then cutting. And then it'll all be done. It's just quick and easy. Um, let's see here. All right, so we are going to do a little stamping and coloring. I have my blends in those same colors. So let's follow that guide. We'll start by um, stamping here is one of the areas. And you just, we're gonna use more than one stamp. So just kind of randomly stamp this on those areas that I was showing you, okay? So it goes all the way down the center. We go all the way to the end here. And you're just being real random like so. And you even can stamp off the edge. Then it goes here. Oh, I already got a mess. Oh. Okay, and then we have one this direction we can put one. And I'm gonna kinda have it just going off of the edge. Oh, that wasn't even very good, was it? Okay, so we have, I think, am I missing any more? So I went here, through the center, here and here, okay? Now we're going to do other images and we kind of overlap. Oh, I'm so mad that that one ended up like that, but I'll color it and you won't even know. All right, clean off this stamp. Actually, do we want this? We might want this on um, our other piece before I put it away. So grab the other one that we're stamping on. And for this one, we are just gonna go down the center and along the bottom if you want to do it that way. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna put one here. No right or wrong or, you know, you just kind of random like I was saying. And then we could do a little bit here. And we could do another little bit, oh, like that. Okay. So this is the front of our portfolio. Then we also have our inside pieces, those five inside pieces. All right, where did I put them here? Oh, I get nervous with my ink not covered. Here they are, okay. We don't have to have them all the same and we don't even know yet if they're gonna be vertical or horizontal. We can kind of see when we get the card bases done what we think of it. So um, you want something that can be either horizontal or vertical. You can do that at the end if you want to. But let's just do maybe a couple of them will have this image on it, or even just one can do that. I'm just gonna have it down in this corner. All right, and I'm gonna do that one too since I already got it started accidentally. We'll stamp the bottom corner of this one. So there's two of them that are stamped. We have the other three left. Cover this up, clean this off. Then we'll grab our next image. And this one will be uh, medium size, I guess. 
So we'll get our stamp set back here. Now, like I was saying, if you have um, a stamp set that is solid images, you will not need to be coloring yours in. So that is something that's even quicker if you plan to do that. This time I'm gonna use a greenery, um, a little greenery spray here. And I'll use a smaller block. This is a B block. And then we'll use the, oh, do I wanna use black and color it in? I think I'm going to use the dark evening evergreen piece so that that is a little bit more obvious that it's greenery and we're going to stamp in the same spots let's see okay all right in the same areas or the same lines or parts of our uh, card bases and they can do overlap a little or can and should you're just kind of randomly putting it in here any places like this where they come to a connection here, those would go on um, several, so that's kind of a nice place to do it as well. And when you're first doing it, it just looks like a big hot mess, basically, but it'll look better. All right, I think that one is good. And this one, put a few little bits of greenery in here. I should be stamping on my my um, pad. It, these photopolymer stamps, you can get a better image if you're stamping on a stamp pad since they don't have the any of the um, foam like the red rubber ones do. Wait, do I want... Uh, I want one more thing. I'm hasty here. Let's do... Um, the last two I did were horizontal. We'll do a vertical orientation on, on two of them again the inside whoops okay and then we'll just have one of the insides left to stamp and we're going to grab our black ink again but then we'll use probably a, a smaller image and i'm going to use the uh, one of the single flowers and if you want to go in and add in the greenery for these, you can. So I'm going to grab that at the same time. I'm going to grab this kind of a double leaf um, stamp. You probably can't see that. You can see it here better probably. And then we're going to use this um, flower. All right. So what I'm going to do then is get my um, whoops, black and soft succulent. First, I'm going to use, I don't need this one anymore. First, I'm going to be using the flower and um, stamping this in black. And just so I don't lose this, I'm just going to set it right here for now. <laughs> and go ahead and stamp this other image then on your pieces. Just fill in some of those open areas. Well, there aren't too many, are there here? And you can overlap, too, if you'd like. All right. And I'm just going to do this last inside, just on the bottom corner. It's not an inch that up very well. This is what you can do. Now, my head might get in the way, but if, with the photopolymer, if you don't like your image, you can line it up and stamp it again. Okay. I'll be coloring that in too. Do I need the black anymore? Uh, yes. I need it for this. The big one. Okay. Filling it in. So you're essentially making your own um, background paper or image, decorating it yourself rather than using 
the paper that's already done so you can do it yourself. This is just kind of nice if you don't have a bunch of dies and you don't have a bunch of designer series paper. If you have a stamp set and some inks, you're good to go. There, I think that's plenty. Okay, now I am going to clean this one off. And you know what else? Before I put this one away, I am gonna, I don't like this, so I'm gonna stamp it on the back. That's better. Clean the flower up. And I think I am just gonna add in a little bit of this, this greenery to, and put it right by this flower that we just stamped, okay? Cover up inks as I go. Ugh, dangerous. Put that one back there later. I'm just gonna use this soft succulent for that. Why am I whistling? Okay. Okay. Oops, I didn't put that on right, did I? Okay. Well, let's try that again. I'm going to use the soft succulent. Try not to just get it all over my stamp thing there. I'm just going to stamp this kind of by some of the images that were by themselves that we just did. This little single flower. Um... Just filling in a little bit more of that empty space. Let's see, let's put some here. You're just building your background here. Ooh, <laughs> what not to do, drop your, right on there, but it'll be colored, I think it'll be okay. Gosh, I am klutzy today. Okay, I think that's okay. I might do one more right here by this one. Again, it looks like a hot mess, right? It'll look better. Just wait and see. Let's see here. Let's go... Over here, over here. I am not doing well today. I'm trying to go too fast, I think. And I'm not on my cushion. I should, uh, that's naughty that I did that. Uh, it could be, like I was saying before, if you do have some foam that you can stamp on, I have it just for this exact thing, but I didn't even get it out. Oh, and now I'm regretting it because then it makes it a little bit harder to get your images nice. Because if you do it on foam, it just kind of has a way it just gives a little bit more and then it looks super nice. I think that's okay. Uh, all right. Good enough. Good enough. Now we can do some quick coloring. Hopefully quick. Normally, you know, I, I love coloring with blends. It's just the uh, what they can do or is just so fun. Um, just don't want it to take too long. Oh, we do need to do our sentiments, but that'll come in later. All right, now we're gonna color. And I may not color everything just so that I can get you out of here at a decent hour. But I do want to bring in my blends in the colors that I've chosen for my cards, okay? I won't do a whole lot with the Evening Evergreen, the, the dark, because I don't want that to, it's too um, power, overpowering, I guess. Soft succulent, I'll use that for some of it. Um, and then I have these, uh, what is this one? It's polished pink, light and dark. And um, light orchid oasis and dark or or orchid oasis. That's hard to say. So let's find what we want to um, color with our pink color here, which is the polished pink. And um, typically, what I do is use their double-ended. One's a bullet tip, and one is the brush tip. Let's use the brush tip first, and just kind of identify which flowers we're going to have that color, and which ones will be in 
in a different color. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is start with just coloring the single ones that we just did. I'm kind of just going to loosely color a little bit on them. And that's going to be marking and helping us know where we're going to be coloring to. And so any of these single ones, I'm just going to kind of plan it out with this, just kind of marking what's going to be pink. And any of those that are single. You don't have to, like I can do it however you want. Whatever colors you want to use. Um, and whichever ones you choose to make the colors will be just fine. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and color in those images. I think I had one more, didn't I? Maybe not. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and bring in the dark now. And I'm just going to use the bullet tip on this one. And I'm going to basically put it in the center and kind of here just along the inside portion of these petals. And, but you should do this part just one at a time because they dry quickly. They're an alcohol-based um, ink. And so you want to kind of get those to all blend together. So I want the darkest part in the middle. And you don't want to go too close to the edge because then it could bleed. So I leave myself a little ways to allow for that movement of the ink and so you can pull that out a little better and you should be able to get some light and dark areas so it doesn't just look flat I don't know maybe you want to go a little closer should we try that then you'll be able to see it a little better I'll try to keep my eye on it so that you're getting a good view of what I'm doing um, again this one was our light so I mean, with each one individually, we're going to go dark in the center. Just kind of bring it out away from the center is what I do. And you can kind of tell by the lines on the actual stamp. Now we're just going to color over those areas that the, where the dark and the light kind of meet. And then with these type of markers it just kind of helps them blend together and pull that color so that it's not harsh or there's not a harsh line it's just nicely blended and kind of shaded I don't know how well that's picking up on the camera but in person it looks nice and blended and um, dark to light so let's keep doing that. I am going probably faster than I normally would when I'm um, doing this on my own, but I, gosh, it's a lot. I should have done this ahead of time maybe, but it's just therapeutic, right? So this is half the fun is sitting and just kind of doing this and pondering and talking and whatever. So um, you're going to get five cards done out of this one which is kind of fun. And you can probably also see the benefit of using solid images because then you wouldn't have to color and you'd be done already. But then it's not as multicolored either. But you'll see in the samples that I have, I did that on some of the samples. I used the solid image stamps and then you can kind of see a little bit better um, how that works. Oh, here was another one. I missed. So let's get this one going. And doesn't that just look sloppy? But this gets gets it all neat and tidy. Having that lighter color and taking your time with kind of blending a little, it makes it very simple. And if you have more of a line, then you just go back over that l the line area and that just kind of blends it in. Okay, how many hundred more do we have? <laughs> Let's see if we can go really fast. Woo! I'm just going to do a bunch of them. This isn't how I would normally do it. But we'll just turn on the 
gas and see how that works. You can do it. Come on. Okay, then. If you do too, ma too many in advance, though, it can kind of dry too much, and then it'll ha be a little bit harder to blend it. So that's why you don't want to do too many at once. But I think we're doing okay with getting that to blend in all right. Am I even on the camera anymore? Oh, I'm going out of the lines and everything. I meant to do that, right? Okay, Whew, that one is colored. Um, where are my other pieces then that we can color? Okay, now this time I'm not going to go with the light first. Let's just go ahead and get started right in on the centers of these. Mm -hmm. All right, that's good. totally up to you if you have a preference of if you would rather use the bullet tip or the brush. Um, you, the more you play with it will help you decide what you like best. And it de definitely depends on the use or the application um, also. So that really makes a difference if you're if it's small or large or whatever. If you're just doing a white like a wash over the background then you can use Especially kind of cover a bigger area, not as precise, of course, then you can use the um, brush end for that kind of a thing. And then more intricate areas, you can use your bullet tip, which is the one I'm using here. Hope you guys are having a good week. Um, gosh, Minnesota has been cold, but it's going to be a nice weekend, so we're thrilled about that and I'm going to go on a little crafting weekend here and uh, that will be really fun. So have that to look forward to. Hope you're doing well. I really appreciate you joining and sharing and liking and anything like that. If you want to get the word out I'd appreciate it. That would be very fantastic. And we'll just color this one. Sometimes I like to put in this little folded over area here. I kind of like to put a little bit of the dark. Okay, so I'm coloring it all in and then I'll pull that color from this area where it's an obvious edge and it just blurs that right in. I love it. See, isn't that cool how that works? It just blurs that right in and it's so pretty. Um, then if you want to add any of your uh, soft succulent onto some of your leaves, you can. And since it's tone on tone, you can just kind of do it really kind of a rough like this because that it looks kind of like an artsy look by if you don't fill it all the way in, it's okay to do it that way if you like it. I mean, that's I like the look of that personally and we do have a lot of oh like paper that's designer series paper that I've noticed that the artist did did it that way where they kind of have it colored in but it's not like perfect and have a little bit of white showing here and there and that's just kind of a 
fun way to make it look. I don't know. I just like that look. It's not a perfect look. It's a handmade look. It's meant to look more watercolory maybe or hand done, I guess. Normal. Just take your time with this part more than I'm doing. Okay, we're getting there. We got this, we got this. We'll come back, you know, again with some of the other colors. Mm, I'm just doing these big ones here. Just wanna make sure you can see it. Mm, I kinda like this end maybe better especially for this narrow section like that. And here we go. Oops. Get a little bit carried away there. And you know, I'm not gonna color everything. I'm just gonna leave it with these two colors. And you get the idea, right? Um, it's not really gonna show all the colors and stuff that I usually like to use. But what'll be nice is that I have the, a bunch of other examples done already. And so you'll be able to see that, kind of how, how that looks. And you can choose to just do it this way on purpose if you'd ever want to. We'll see how it looks because we're going to use it to make some cards. I just may have to finish coloring later because it's um, a lot a lot to do. Okay, so what you're going to do next is we're going to do some uh, cutting. Let's look at our other inside pieces here. Those are fine. I don't think that'll hurt anything just to leave them like that too. Now what we're going to do is um, cut these apart a little a little totally and what we want to do then is this one you go by that score line that see how what blends do that's okay they that's what we we intentionally know they're gonna do that if that makes sense um, anyways we're gonna cut this one down in the center and this is gonna go on the front of the holder I don't know if you remember me talking about that but see how it shows this is the look when you have it on two sides and then your sentiment can be off in one of these white spaces. Now, you can imagine if it was completely colored, it would look better. So we have our front and our back. That's what this is gonna be for here, okay? So where should I put it so I don't lose it? Okay. Next, grab your big sheet here, and we're gonna cut this into our uh, card pieces. Now, you can just do it on the back if you want. Everything's scored, and you're just cutting on those score lines that we made earlier. We're gonna start though, always make sure you do this vertical, um, this one that goes the long ways here. That has to be your first cut so that everything will turn out right. So I'm just putting, lining up that score line that I made originally and we can cut away the pieces that, like this was one portion that we're not gonna use. Um, and that's okay, you could use that on for another decoration on an inside of a card or whatever. But for the general card that we're making, we're gonna not use that little piece. And that's our, there's not a lot of waste. So that was one of our places that we had to get rid of, or one of the pieces that was discarded. So you can see the look here. And where's the other one there? And these are three and a half by four and three fourths. And so you're in, just getting a one, two, three, you're getting five layers here at that with that size, three and a half by four and three fourths, which is the same size that we cut down our inside pieces to be as well. Okay. We're getting two of these. 
in. This little piece is a portion that we don't need to use that we can set aside for either using it in, on the inside of something else, that kind of thing. So here are all five front layers. That's good. We got those done. I think that's pretty square. And next we're going to cut our colored cardstock. So grab that. And for me, I had chosen the soft succulent, right? Here. Okay. So we're going to do a similar way, a similar thing here on this one. We're just going to cut this into five pieces. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is get my cheat sheet here. This is our 8.5 by 11 colored mat um, that we're cutting. So each one is going to end up being 3 and 5 eighths by 4 and 7 eighths. So what we do is, um, I don't know, this will probably be zoomed in too much. Maybe let's, let's try it here. I'll try to get this um, zoomed out a little. So if you need a kind of a screenshot or whatever, you can get an idea of how this one works. I'll try to get it all on here. All right, so you can see, oh, I got some ink on it. <laughs> it's 11 inches long and eight and a half wide. So our first center score is at four and seven eighths. So let's do that. Four and seven eighths. So it's just an eighth of an inch under five inches. And score there. All right. And actually not score, cut, we're cutting. We're cutting. All right, so we have a narrow and a wide one. On our wide one, that's this one, you're gonna be cutting each section at three and five eighths. So go to three and a half and then another eighth. And we'll get three of those. So three and five eighths. Three and five eighths. And one more, three and five eighths. So we just have a little teeny piece that we cut off on these. So here are three of those layers. We have two more that we need. So this is the three and a half, I thought it was, no, three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. So these two are four and seven eighths. Just, then they'll all be the same size. And this is the only little bit that's not on here. So we could use that for other things as well. And here are our five layers, okay? All right, so we're gonna attach these, each, all five of these onto the layers. And um, you can either use your liquid glue or I'm just gonna see if I have my snail already. I'm gonna use my stamp and seal because it's quicker, but you can use um, the liquid glue or whatever you have, tear and tape if, it, if you want. That's a little more putsy, but it's very strong. This seal will work great. Okay, and this shouldn't have too big of a border around it. It's kind of small, and that's okay. We just kind of want a hint of that. Okay, you can see how that looks. Nice. And um, we'll just do that with all of them. Now, if you just stamped in color and you didn't have to color anything in with your blends, you can see how, oh, I didn't want to do that. You can see how fast that would be. This goes on my card base and I already put tape on it. So I'm kind of going to grab my one, card, one of my card bases. That wasn't thinking. It has a little bit bigger of a layer for the card front. A wider. And then this goes on here, like so. And we will go ahead and put our sentiment on there, too. When we're done uh, assembling, we'll just do the front sentiment. We'll just stamp it right on there. You can do that first before you put them on if you'd like. Either way. In fact, that's probably what you should be doing stamping it, then adhering it. That's the rules. And that's something I should be following. Okay. 
So if we want to do that, kind of look at your pieces and decide how you want them oriented, if you want it horizontal. And so here are two vertical. Um, this one, it could be either way, whichever. And I should be looking. Our inside pieces um, that have just something in the corner, most of them could probably go either way, but I have vertical. That could go either. The, I kind of like it on the bottom right, typically. So I have two horizontal, two, three vertical. Okay, so we'll do two horizontal, three vertical. So here will be horizontal, and I'm saying that because of our sentiments. And um, we just want to get our sentiments going the right direction, of course. I'm going to pull in my stamp set again, and I'm going to use the... Should I use Evening Evergreen? I think that should work okay. And we'll stamp our sentiments here. All right, one of them, so we have five. Sorry there for the noise. This one says, um, so lucky to call you friend. And we have, uh, thank you with all my heart. That's a good one too. Wishes for a beautiful birthday. I know one of them just says celebrate. I kind of like that as well. And um, let's see if we want to use all five on the front. Like just a little reminder that you are loved. I don't know that I would want that on the front necessarily. There's a for a special person on a special day. You know, you choose what you want your sentiments to stay out, say on the front. It can be any, whatever you need them for or whatever your note card set that is for, like are they all get well, or are they birthday, or are they Christmas, or whatever. So uh, I need my block again. This one is best wishes for a beautiful birthday. Make sure it's inked up well. Best wishes for a beautiful birthday. Um, I'm going to do more more than one of those because birthday, I those are my most used. Probably birthday and um, thank yous, I guess. I'm just going to make sure this is straight. Get my head in the way. <laughs> go, go, go. Woohoo. Yay. Pretty. Okay. So I did two birthdays. And what else do we want to do? We want to clean that off, don't we? Ooh. All right. These chamois look horrible, but they're nice and clean. I, it gets everything pretty well clean. But they just stain up so they don't look good. And um, but as long as if you can get by with that, they're a good, good cleaner for your stamps, and you don't have to use any you know chemicals that way, which is kind of nice. You just use water and keep rinsing it out, and it keeps getting them clean. Okay, I gotta get my stamp set organized. We have it's so nice that they have these images here, and then it can stick right on there, and you know if you have everything or not. And that is very helpful. Otherwise, it's just easy to misplace things. Okay. All right. Next, I want to do celebrate on, oh, at least, mm, at least one. So I have thank you, celebrate. I think I'm going to do that with the others. I think I'm going to save these for inti inside sentiments to do later. Um, I don't always put my sentiments uh, on my card on the inside because, or sometimes not even on the outside, because then it can be for whatever you want. It does not, here, I'm gonna use my grid paper, which is so handy, because then I'm afraid that sometimes if you don't use that, it's my head, um, then it's you think it's straight and then you come back later and go, oh no, it's not. 
celebrate. Woohoo. Um, next, I'm going to do two thank yous. Okay, celebrate's done. Thank you with all my heart. And if you're always, if you're ever worried about um, putting your your sentiment on crooked, you can cheat and kind of kind of go at an angle with it if you want. I don't know if this one will look good that way. I have done that before, or like this. I don't think it'll look good on this one, but I'm just gonna try to keep it straight. Oh gosh. Commit and go. Okay. One more. Okay, I'll do it. Crooked on purpose. Ah. At least it, you got to make it bad enough so that it's obvious that you meant to do that, right? Okay. Clean that baby off. So now we have our all of our sentiments done. And we can put that back. And we're getting there. We can kind of start assembling these, I think. Um, go ahead and I'm going to grab the card bases and all of our pieces and kind of get layering and adhering. At least now you know which ones you plan for vertical and horizontal. So we had our birthday ones I wanted to do horizontally. I have to cover that up. I wonder if it'll come off with my sander eraser thing. Of course, I can't get to it very easily. I'm going to try um, using, this is just a little smudge of black. This sometimes works well. Um, you can also use a um, little bit of whiteout <laughs> if, if, you know, if it's a little bit. Like this one is kind of bad, so I'm going to have to work on that later. But that did actually get a bunch of it out. It's not perfect, but it's better. Let's put these on here on our layers. Finish that up. We had started a little bit ago. Okay. I love the soft succulent color here. That looks so pretty. And then if... The other color was on here too. That would really show up well. Oh, I don't want that on there. Whew. I got it off. I think it'll be okay. I wasn't getting it on in the right spot, and it took. So that's the only bad thing about this compared to the um, the liquid adhesive. You have a little scoop time on that stuff. Okay, there we go. And you could put that on a base right away as well. Bone folder, necessary. Very necessary. There we go. This, and like I said, this front piece has more like a quarter of a healthy quarter of an inch border all the way around it. You could do these with masculine cards. Um, you could do it with, oh gosh, about anything. Christmas would be pretty as well. Uh, snowflakes would be really pretty, like overlapping different sizes of snowflakes. And blue and white and silver all look pretty together. Getting there. Hope we're not in an hour already. Yes, we are. Ah. Gosh, we still have the holder to do. I don't know, guys. I've never been good at getting done quickly. Ugh. Got to, uh, like I probably tell you every week, right? Uh. All right. 
and I would love to see any creations you all make if you if you make some um, note card sets and you feel like sharing let me know I would love to see what you're doing and this is one of those things you can do with about anything that bone folder is probably the best investment it's like one of our cheapest tools but it makes a huge difference and you can kind of tell if how it folds and that kind of thing if somebody hasn't used a bone folder you can it doesn't look as crisp so that is my tip of the day how's that <laughs> and but if you don't have one you can still use um, like one of our blocks anything that's just got a nice edge on it and you can kind of go like this um, it doesn't slide as well as a bone folder does but it works one more to put on here. Okay, here we are guys, we're getting there. Okay insides three verticals right here for the three verticals and these if you uh, don't have a colored image like this you don't you don't have to um, color that in or you can choose to whatever you like but just putting a separate layer on even though it's tone on tone and they're both white it just adds that little bit of a dress up for it um, I also would encourage you to stamp an image on the, the envelope flap or the front of the envelope, too. That also, especially when you're giving someone a gift, just those little touches can make a big difference. vertical with our lovely little oopsie on the back that nobody will see. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, you guys. I have ink everywhere. Ah. Someday I'll get that under control. I would not send it out like that. You see all those? No. I'm going to clean that off. That would drive me crazy. Okay. Our two horizontal birthday insides here. You could add a sentiment and color if you want. But even just like that is kind of a little bit more dressed up than just having it plain. Okay, there, yay. And make sure you stamp and put something on the back and sign it because uh, it's your artwork, right? Okay, here, that is done. Um, you can go ahead and add bling if you want. I probably would. And just dress it up a little bit, finish coloring or whatever. But even with just portions of it colored, it still looks pretty, I think. Um, so that you can do that on purpose if you want to. Now we're going to quick make the holder. And to do that, I am going to take those two pieces that we uh, colored earlier, and this is the front and the back of that, and I am going to run them through my um, emboss machine, stamp cut and emboss machine, the same one that die cuts, except this time we're going to use an embossing folder, which this one's called Painted Posies, and it's a 3D and typically a 3D just really has a lot of different levels and layers. It's not just high and low. There are inter, inter, I don't know, <laughs> middle ones. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, there are all different um, heights or, or thicknesses of your embossing on there. So it's not a good way for me to explain it. Ugh. But we are going to go ahead and put this through our emboss machine and get some cool uh, pattern on here. This one is kind of sideways, or you could just have it, you know, whichever direction you want. But I think I want it this way on this card. It doesn't uh, cover all of it up, but it's just going to add a little bit of interest to the background. I'll show you how that works with our machine here. So this is our stamp cut and emboss machine. And you've seen me use it a bunch of times. And all you need for a 3D embossing folder is the base and then the number four plate. And that's all you need. So then you'll run it through. Oh boy, did it stay in there? Okay. Um, normally do the hinge first. If you can go a little sideways, do that, but uh, it should be fine. It, this is a big folder, so it doesn't have a lot of room to wiggle it in there, but it went through super easily, and you sometimes you think, oh, it didn't even do anything, but then you get it out, and you see lovely, ah, oh, isn't that pretty? Gosh, it's, that would be gorgeous all by itself with nothing stamped either, and they're not the same image, but it still is that floral, and it really pops up here. Love that one more this other one so one is the front and one is the back of our for our folio piece and we'll do this one then it's kind of the same I think I want that showing on this portion but hinge first okay I think that's all I need this thing for and there's our other one. Pretty, pretty. Whoops, as I drop it and throw it. Okay. Oh my, even that's a mess. <laughs> Should I turn it over? It's a little better, isn't it? It doesn't take me long to make a nice mess. We're going to need this, and we're going to need um, another piece of that soft succulent or whatever color you want and I need my pattern to tell me what to do so that is going to be needed <laughs> I know I wrote it down on something when I oh I bet it's in here yay okay now this is the holder that I made some variations on some that I've seen and kind of um, just tried to find something unique a little bit, but yet quick and easy. So, first thing we're going to do is cut our cardstock down to 8.5 by 9.5. So, we know that it's already 8.5 this direction, so we want the length to be 9.5. Nice and square, so I'm going to cut that at nine and a half. All right, then we're going to be cutting, or we're going to score down the center. We're going to um, go all the way down, and it is where's my score mark. Um, we are scoring at four and a half and five. So with this long edge up, you're going to start with four and a half. And make sure you don't use the dark cutting blade and just use your scoring. So there is four and a half and five. Okay, then you can rotate your cardstock. And we're going to do uh, a couple of little score lines here. And the first one is at two and a half. Score, sc whoops, score, score. And the next one is at two and three fourths. So just a little quarter of an inch change on that part. All right, then what I want you to do is, this is your front of your portfolio back and the spine. This is some flaps that are gonna go on the inside. We wanna remove some of this. And 
that's going to help with the folding and the bulk and that kind of thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is take get my paper here, and we're going to go and measure about three fourths of an inch. So if I put um, this score line, and in fact I want to kind of show this spot and this spot. Can you see the scores on there at all? This is that quarter of an inch, and this is the wider one. Put a dot here and here where those lines intersect, and then we're going to measure three fourths of an inch out approximately and put them a little mark on there. Um, so I'm going to put this score line on the three fourths of an inch and I'm just going to kind of make a little mark and then I'm going to do three fourths of an inch on the other side. You could use your ruler if you pr if you like that better but just make a little tick mark at three fourths of an inch on each side of this narrow portion at the bottom. Okay, mark it here and here and here and here. Now we're going to cut that out. Okay, so what you're going to do is either use a straight edge and a, and a cutter or on a trimmer like this, I'm going to just line up this dot and this dot in the track where the, where the cutting blade will be going. So you kind of eye it and you can see right through the center I don't know, hopefully you can. So you can see right down in, in the track here. That's too close. <laughs> and um, I'm going to line up those dots there. So I'm lining up here and here in the track. Or at least roughly, and then I can see it. So I will wiggle it around to get it exactly where I want it. And now I'm just going to cut, get my blade back down here, and I'm going to cut up to that dot on this side okay three-fourths into the here now this side will go on this side of that little gusset and then go down to that mark so we're going to change that angle there look for it in the track and get a nice straight line there like this this portion is going to come out so you can either cut this with the scissors or snips or on your trimmer, whatever you prefer. Just a quick little uh, cut. So now I'm just basically going to cut off this little middle section between the two dots. All right, there. So that's odd looking, but that's what we want. Let me go out a little bit more again now. And now we're going to use our bone folder. And crease on a bunch of these folds and that will help make it be nice and sturdy and crisp and uh, it's gonna be pretty now this one is just a little quarter of an inch area there so we're gonna make sure both of those get scored and that's just gonna help with the bulk of the cards give it a little bit of it uh, room to expand. Okay, this is going together a lot quicker, thankfully. And see how it goes like this. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, voila. All right, so what we're going to do then is you would grab your envelopes as well, but how you can store this is you're going to be putting some on this side and, you know, envelopes, you'll be kind of just tucking them right in there, and then it's going to close like this. We're going to decorate the front and the back. Isn't that cool? I love this. It turned out really good. I kind of made that one up a little bit. Here's what the bottom looks like. It's just got a little bit of a holder there. Now we're going to decorate it and add ribbon. Okay, um, we'll move these out while we do that. And um, go ahead and grab the ribbon that you want to use. And we're going to be putting that around it. I use just a matching color here, but we want to do this before you put your front decorative panels on because we want to color or cover up uh, a bunch of the, I don't want that. Mm -mm. I have snips just for ribbon, 
because they have to be nice and sharp. Otherwise, you know, they can get dull and not work, but these will work like a charm. Um, and then you can decide, like, if you want this to actually wrap all the way around or if you just want the little ribbon piece to stick out. And that's what I'm going to do just to conserve ribbon is just kind of tape it like so. Um, is that how I want to do it? Yeah, that should work. So we'll make sure there's plenty of room for tying. So I want to double that because I want two of them, two ends to tie. So that's roughly, um, let's see. Oh, I have the wrong side. All right, get out my ruler. So you are going to need roughly 12, about 14 inches or so. Cut that in half. You can do the whole wrap all the way around if you'd prefer. But I do the cheater method. Hmm. Have it kind of far enough in so that our layer that we're going to put over it We'll cover that, and then it won't show on the spine though, but that's okay. I think that's okay. If that bugs you, go ahead and just wrap it around like you normally would and do the actual tying and stuff. And I just wanna make sure they're in the same spot roughly, right across from each, or you know, so we'll be able to tie that. All right, now we're gonna cover that up with our front and our back portion. And I want it so that this full edge and this full edge are near each other. <laughs> okay, they go, the, the fullest edge is gonna go right next to the spine, if that helps. You could use dimensionals if you want. All right, front portion. Okay, and then we'll do the back portion, of course. All right, we're getting there. Give it a nice press here, especially where these ends are sticking out. And we're, I would want to put some bling on this, and I will. One thing I love, of, as you know, is Wink of Stella. And this adds shimmer wherever you want it to go. I'm just going to shimmer up the actual colored flowers on this one. And it does um, lighten as it dries. And I'm going to do the colored portion just to add a little uh, bling to it. Got to add a little sparkle on about everything I can, unless it's for somebody that I wouldn't like it, or like a guy or something. <laughs> but you can, I don't know how well it picks up, but it really does add a little um, oomph to the, your pretty stamping there. Okay, and you can do this on the cards if you want. Um, you can add some gemstones on there. You can color it some more, all that good stuff. But I am going to just leave them as is for now because it's, you know, probably been long enough. But I am going to tie this up and show you kind of how you can give that as a gift. Give that a little tie on the side. Somebody had given me a thumbs up while we're on here, so thank you for that. Feel free to leave comments and share with your, you know, share if you are enjoying this. I hope you are. I appreciate you watching. And there is our lovely little note card set, huh? Oh, I love it. Who wouldn't want that? 
And you can do it for guys and gals. Okay, our other samples that I've made, let me grab those. Okay, are you ready? Um, one, I think I have one, yeah, I made three different, three different types, because I wanted to give you ideas on, I didn't do the, um, holder, but I wanted to give you some stamping ideas for the same exact layout and stamping that we did. Now, this is what I was talking about, where you use colors, and it's colored images, so you, that you don't have to color it in with blends. All you're doing is stamping, and then you're done, right? And then I like to stamp again on that little centerpiece. This is our craft paper. And then I stamp, stamp on the envelope as well. So we have, you're such a blessing. So grateful. Okay. And that's on the corner. You're such a blessing again. And so grateful again. I love this um, this set that we have. It's full of them. It has to do with I think it's seedlings or something like that. Soft seedlings. Uh, anyways, Cindy, hi. Nice to see you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm so grateful for that. <laughs> All right, so grateful. So these are kind of more the thank you note type. But the Mary Merlot color and the Mango Melody and I don't remember which green that was. Blackberry Bliss, one of my favorites. So this is a set you could box up and make the holder for. Then I tried something totally different when I used metallic embossing powders and I heated them. I don't know, this will be like enough to wake you up, right? It's pretty... Um, Pretty bold. I don't know what to think of it, but I made five of these then. Best wishes and happy thoughts. Did I decorate the inside? Not too much. This is um, put up on some strips of foam so that it's held up off of the um, card base. And I used white, silver, and gold and bronze embossing powders. And then our colored pearls that we have metallic pearls. You're on my mind. This is our. Uh, gold glimmer paper in the background. I don't know. It's okay. It's just kind of different. Anyways, that's that set. And then I made more of a pastel look. Um, this one is like for a wedding. So it says, oh no, it's, you're on my mind. Never mind. <laughs> it wasn't a wedding. Heartfelt thank you. And you can see this one, I have an embossing folder that I used for the card front that added kind of that uh, texture look. And I just used some shapes that, you know, it's not floral, it's just this set of shapes that we have. I probably, do I have it here? Um, yes, yay. This one is called Graceful Tiles, and it just has different images and different sizes. So that's what I used on this set. And just stamped on the inside on the edge. This one is the wedding one. Much love in your new life together. And I just wanted to show you that if you're not sure for color combinations, you can look at our, uh, what we call our color families. Oh, and this is the image I just stamped on the front of the envelope. Um, the color families, like you could choose um, three or four colors out of our, this is out of our subtles. Um, you could do the brights. You could do, um, we have them kind of set up in our catalog so that they're grouped together. So you could choose them out of, a, out of the same group if you want, if you're having trouble coming up with color combinations. All right, guys. Uh, I hope that it helped you and, and you enjoyed the project here. Let me come on back. Mm, there we go. Wow, this took way too long. Thank you for hanging in there and for, um, Thank you, Aunt Cindy. Uh, thanks for joining me, everybody. If you watch the replay, please um, let me know. I'd love to hear your comments, and, and I do look at those later, so I appreciate it. Have a great night, and 